Coming up next on Base Hunters, we have Sisu. This is episode number 18. Stick around. Hey, home theater fans and fellow base heads. My name is Todd Anderson with the home theater forum, avnirvana.com. And you're watching episode number 18 of Base Hunters. Tonight, we are checking out a smash hit from last year, and it has a lot to offer in terms of base. So I'm really excited about this one. Stick around because we are using a new tool uh, this go around. It's the FFT Analyzer Tweet. We're zeroing in more on the base region and looking specifically at uh, peak decibel levels. I think this gives us a great way of visualizing what we're actually hearing. We're going to present everything in a little bit different of a way to keep things fun and exciting and moving along. So uh, please let me know down in the comments section what you think about this episode. Okay, so let's give a shout out to Kaleidoscape for providing this movie. Uh, you can see right there, this one is in 4K HDR. It's about a 59 gig file and it comes with a lossless Dolby Atmos track. And when it comes to trying to get the best source quality video and audio out there. We're reaching for Kaleidoscape and that's why we've partnered uh, with them. So many thanks to them uh, for being our founding partner. Also want to give a big shout out to our two new show partners. That is Ascendo, the speaker manufacturer out of Germany. Of course, they make that awesome 32 inch infrasonic sub that is still sitting in my home theater room. We are trying so hard to coordinate to get this thing integrated and ready to roll. They make some fantastic speakers. Definitely go check them out. And if you live here in the United States, how do you get access to Ascendo? It's through their North American distribution arm that is Sutherland AV Marketing. Uh, hit up Todd Sutherland over there if you have any questions about Ascendo. All right, so let's get the scorecard up there and you can see I'm giving this one a B. I know this was a really popular movie. I thought this was a solid entry into the genre. I, I think, you know, I, I watched it and I was thinking, man, this is kind of like a poor man's Quentin Tarantino. And in many ways it is, but it does stand on its own in several facets. So definitely check it out if you haven't watched it. Uh, in terms of audio and video, this one is delicious. It looks absolutely amazing in 4K, hence the A. And you can see there, I'm also giving this an A for overall audio. It's got lots of environmental effects, really nice ambiance. And when it comes to bass, the da ding right there, you can see this one is getting an A. This is not only just a reference film in terms of how the bass is used and how the bass accentuates the impact of various scenes, but it's also a demo film. It's one of those films that you can watch and enjoy, but you can also tag up some of these scenes and show them to friends and family, but also hang out and watch them yourself and just see what your system is capable of doing. Um, definitely worth having in your collection. So let's check out the scenes that we're going to look at tonight. And you can see there we have four scenes and they are all in pink. Thus, I'm going to show all four to you. They all have uh, unique characteristics that I think are worth looking at. None of them are running too long. And I'm actually not going to show you the complete clips. Uh, we're going to kind of work our way through this manually, maybe start and stop a couple of them and flip between the FFT analyzer and the spectrograph uh, just to check out every little nuance so you know exactly what you're hearing when you're watching this movie in your own home theater room. Okay, so let's check out our first script scene that is BH5. And remember, if you're a Kaleidoscape owner and you have this movie at home, you can always hit me up over on Avian Nirvana in the thread for episode number 18. And I can get the script file over to you so you can enjoy these scenes right in the comfort of your own home theater room. So just a reminder over here, we have frequency. These are our base frequencies. Uh, this is eight hertz all the way up to 80 hertz there. And then all the higher pitch sounds go all the way up to 20K. Across the bottom, we have time. And over here is intensity in terms of decibels. Let me just show you real quick what the FFT analyzer looks like. Uh, this is a lot different than it used to be uh, down here across the bottom. We have frequency. So this is 20 hertz and each line up 
marks off another 10 hertz. So this is 30, 40, 50, and so on. And over here, we have decibels. Uh, this is 48 decibels right here is what we consider to be about reference. That's about 75. And then, boy, this is getting really hot and heavy up into that region. Okay, let's check out what's going on here. So right away, we have our hero. And this tank is chasing him, and we are hit with a severe blast right there. Shell from that tank. And we have another got the cannon firing off the tank and that gun can produce some big time damage so you can see right there lots of activity in 40 30 hertz down into the infrasonics and then we have this really nice moment of machine gun fire here's what that looks like in real time <laughs> Okay, and let's switch over to the FFT analyzer to get a closer look at what's happening in this scene. So you can see right there, this first explosion. This is our 20 to 30 hertz range, and we are hitting up into 90 dB. Lots of information represented right there in the upper 30 hertz area. And that comes down nicely. And then we have our second blast. This one, peak values that are hitting up to about 100 dB, and this is right around 35 hertz. So that's a very powerful blast uh, that you can definitely feel. And because we're in the human range of hearing there, you're hearing that also. You can see that blast really reverberates down through uh, the 20s, and we're starting to get into a little bit of the infrasonics there and move ahead to the gunfire. And this is a really interesting uh, way of looking at this because you can see we have peak frequencies and 25 hertz. Uh, we're looking just below 35 hertz. And right here around 50, it's getting close to 100 dB right there. And there's another really good look at what's going on with that machine gun fire. Let's go ahead and play that. So visually speaking, that gives you a really good sense of what you're hearing when you're watching this movie. Now, fast forward through this scene, and we have this moment where, unfortunately, this horse steps on a landmine. And uh, wow, yeah, you can see a lot more of the same. We have quite a bit of peak activity right there in the 20 hertz region up into 30 hertz. We have uh, some bleed right down into the infrasonics. And then we have this nice moment uh, as he's laying on the ground. Well, not, not actually so nice for him, but there's this nice gnarly bit of bass peppered all throughout here. It sounds really wonderful. It brings into this sense of confusion, uh, but also danger. And uh, boy, it really sounds great, even though it's, it's a uh, rough scene to watch. All right, back over to the FFT analyzer. Let's just give this a second look and you can see exactly what's going on in the lower registers. And there's lots of activity right down here in 20 and 30 hertz, which deepens the, uh, the darkness of this particular moment. And not a bad way to start the movie off because we're already flexing some serious LFE muscles. So let's check out the next scene. This is BH1 and we are hit right away <laughs> with a scene where his dog arrived and he's carrying a grenade. And here's the result of that. Yeah, you can see there a nice little explosion. Let's just look at what that looks like here on the FFT analyzer. And you can see this is pretty much the peak of that blast of LFE. And right here, we're talking about 95 dB for around 26, 27 Hertz. So that's a deep, sounding bit of bass there and you can see it tapers off nicely all the way down to about 80 hertz and we're still in and above reference territory right there but what i wanted to look at most of all in this particular scene is after the blast knocks him down his uh nemesis arrives and we have some really nice infrasonics 
going on. So let's just forward this right here. This region all through here is 20 hertz. And so right down in here, we're talking infrasonics. This is a really great moment. And we talk about reference bass and bass that adds to the impact and feeling of a moment. Well, this is it right here. This adds this sense of dread and you can see that he's in trouble. You have the Nazi soldiers are over top of him. They're, they're mocking him and they're throwing a noose over this sign. And it is a very intense moment. So let's see what that looks like. Keep your eye in here. Here's 20 Hertz. And then the infrasonics are down through here. Actually, let me pause it right there and we'll just go back and take a peek at right there. So we have probably 18 Hertz. This is probably around 16 Hertz or so, and it's approaching 84 dB. So this is definitely something that you're feeling, not necessarily hearing, and it's quite the experience. Now in this next clip, we're gonna look at something that's a little bit different. It's an, it's another nuance in this movie when it comes to bass that is really fun to experience. So let's check it out. And this is script file BH2. And you can see right away there, we have some nice bass that's associated uh, with these trucks rumbling by. Nothing too unusual there, but as we move forward through this scene, we have this really gory moment where this guy gets a spike right in the head. They, they add this LFE in here uh, to uh, accentuate that moment. Here's what that uh, sounds like. Yep. Yeah, that's pretty brutal. Tosses that guy out. And then uh, Sisu is about to peek through this window. And here's what I wanted to show you in this scene. Right here, we have this really awesome pulse of bass that then shifts down even lower into the registers. So this region right through here, this is 30 Hertz, dips right down and it pulses right out through 20 Hertz. And it is pretty awesome. Here's what it looks like. So you can see each one of these is roughly about two seconds long. Let's switch over to the FFT analyzer for that specific scene. And right away, right here, you can see that first pulse. And unfortunately, the image is blocking. But right there, I mean, we're getting close to 96, if not a little bit higher there, right around uh, 37 hertz. And then it shifts over. And right here is where we see that second band. And you can see that is squarely right at about, oh, about 25 hertz. And we are getting so close to 100 dB. That is a really gnarly pulse of bass. And the rest of the scene gives us more of the same what we experienced throughout uh, the rest of the movie. You can see here, we have nicely textured bass that's peppered all throughout. It's matched with the, uh, the machines that these guys are riding around in uh, right here. Uh, this is all associated with being inside of the tank. So once again, they're using bass that is just drawing you into the scene. And so not only does it sound good, but it's just accentuating uh, moments in this film. And that brings us to the last scene that we're gonna check out today. And hopefully once this is over, you'll have a really good global understanding of what you're getting in terms of bass in this film. Now, this is the grand finale, the climax of the movie. You have the bad guy going down with a bomb and then this massive plane crash. So let's check that out. And here you can see they're inside the plane. Here's the, the bad guy. He's about to get handcuffed to a bomb. Let's uh, just let this roll. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's going to hurt. And let's switch over to the FFT analyzer to get a better look at what exactly is going on in this explosion. So there's the initial blast. Uh, you can see that they're really focusing 25 hertz and above. It's a nice little pop of bass there. But as we begin to pull away, look at what is going on down here. All through the 20s, I mean, this is 
infrasonics that are right at 75 dB, we're talking probably down to about 15 Hertz. You can really feel the result of that explosion. It's pretty, pretty awesome stuff. All right, so let's flip back over to the spectrograph and move ahead to the inevitable ending. You know this plane's going down. You can see here during this moment, lots of great bass associated with the plane rattling and shuddering as it's plummeting to the earth. You know exactly what's gonna happen. Plane's going down and spam slams right into the ground and we get this massive explosion of bass. Let's go over to the FFT analyzer and we'll just let that one play out and you can see what's happening in uh, specific frequencies. And here comes the impact. All right, so I think that's given us a really good global view of what's going on in this movie. We have lots of hard hitting activity in the 20 to 30 hertz range. Uh, wonderful texture throughout the film. A lot of variations in terms of the bass presentation. And of course, we're hitting down into those infrasonic stuff that you can really feel. And it's a lot of fun. So definitely a movie that you should have in your library if you're a fan of the low end. Now, what kind of subsystem do you need to really appreciate this movie? Well, small subs, things that are rolling off around the 30 hertz mark, you're gonna be missing out on a lot. If you've got a sound bar with a small wireless sub, you're also gonna be missing out on a lot. So unfortunately, this movie really is gonna play best to folks that have a really nice subsystem that's capable of playing down to 20 hertz and preferably into the infrasonics. All right, folks, that is all I have for you today. Again, leave me some comments to let me know if you like this presentation of Bass Hunters a little better than the ones in the past, if it's maybe a little bit more understandable, if you like the visuals a little better, if you like the pacing of it better, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, you can always track me down on X. My uh, handle there is at AV Woofer. And of course, you can always find me on the home theater form. That is avnirvana.com. My username there is my name. That's Todd Anderson. We'll see you soon.